Hello, today is the eighth day of Tishrei. Tomorrow is the eve of Yom Kippur, uh, which is a, a very uh, full day in many ways. In, um, in Traditionally, it's even divided into two parts, where the first half until midday is considered to be almost a holiday, even though it's not like one of the regular holidays, but it is a day that's mentioned in the Torah. The Torah says that from the ninth until that on the ninth of Tishrei, from evening to evening, you shall afflict yourselves. And obviously, the time of the fasting is on the tenth, not on the ninth. And the sages asks ask why is it that the Torah says this? And so they learn something very interesting, which we'll get to later, that anyone who eats and drinks a great deal on the 9th, and then fasts on the 10th, the Torah has it as if they fasted for two, for two full days. And to understand this concept, why, why it is this way, why would a day full of eating <laughs> and joy be considered a fast day, we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later. I hope I don't forget. And the other thing I wanted uh, to mention is, again, that the first half of the day, because of this, um, as it were, an, an injunction to eat uh, uh, more than the usual. By the way, eating more than the usual doesn't mean that you have to stuff yourself. Um, it means that during the whole year you don't need to stuff yourself. So eating more is, is having another meal um, during, during the, the ninth of Tishrei. So, the first half of the day was always considered to be almost like a holiday in and of itself. There were even people, if I'm not mistaken, who wore a strimo, which is a sign of a holiday, one of these fur hats. And then, from midday and on, it became very grave. Now, grave does not mean sad. Not the same thing. To be serious is not the same thing as being uh, sad or being depressed. It just means it's serious. But Yom Kippur in and of itself is a day of great joy because uh, the fasting is not because we're in sorrow, because we're in mourning. On the contrary, the whole premise of Yom Kippur is that God is cleansing us, is atoning for all of our sins. And so a person comes out of Yom Kippur white as wool and right as rain, and everything goes back to being pure. And so it's a great joy. Now, Rav Steinzels used to tell people, you know, what does it mean that God is cleansing you? He said, have you ever seen a baby being changed? It's the same thing. The best thing the baby can do is not to disturb, not to, not, not to get in the way. So really, in a certain sense, Yom Kippur is something that almost happens by itself because really we don't do anything. But what does it mean not to get in the way? It means, like we said yesterday, to cleave to God, to be connected to God. Like a baby, when you change its diaper and you clean it and you, or you bathe it, the, the best part about that is the eye contact. The best part about that is the intimacy that you have of a child, a little uh, few month or, or maybe year old child that you have to take complete care of, but it's done in such a wonderful way. And it's very uplifting. Um, I never understood why people don't like to change diapers. I understand the smell and all that, but that's a very small price to pay for the intimacy that you have with your child, any child, especially if it's your own, that you're taking care of them at this level. And this is the way that God sees us on Yom Kippur. So it's a very joyous day. On the other hand, it is grave because um, there's a tremendous amount of seriousness in the air. In any case, so the, the ninth is also something in and of itself which is also why we won't have a, a class tomorrow. But let's get back to what we were discussing, the four aspects of the Yom Kippur service. 
And we said before that there's this idea that if you eat on the ninth, it's as if you afflicted yourself for two days, as if you fasted for two days, the ninth and the tenth. What's the idea here? Like we said, the fasting on Yom Kippur is not because of mourning. It's not because of something negative. It's actually something positive. And the way that's usually described in the colloquial manner is that on Yom Kippur, no one needs to eat. You don't need it. Um, because I said, you're like a few inches or feet above the ground. You're, you're not in your regular capacity as a regular human being. You're closer to an angel. Angels don't eat. They don't need it. In a certain sense, we can feel a lot of that on Yom Kippur. Now, there's something very important about eating and not eating that needs to be discussed when we talk about the afflictions, the five afflictions of the body on Yom Kippur. There's another time in the week that we don't eat on purpose, or at least we eat very little. And yet, it's considered to be the highest point of the week. And what I'm referring to is what's called Shalashidis in Yiddish, or Sudash Lishit in Hebrew, or the third meal of Shabbat in English. The third meal is eaten, or would be eaten, around Mincha time. After you dive in the afternoon prayer on Shabbat, there's still about an hour and a half, something like that, until Shabbat ends. During that time, there is time for another meal. And some people actually wash their hands and eat bread for that meal. The Zohar, on the other hand, says that the third meal is not about food. And one of the sources it gives for this idea of a third meal on Shabbat, again, understand that a normal person eats two meals a day. The evening meal and the day meal. That's, that's what a normal person is supposed to be eating. This whole concept of three meals a day with snacks in the middle, that's not the way that our ancestors ate. And a lot of problems are caused by it. You don't have to be afraid of it, but it's usually, it usually causes obesity, it causes all kinds of problems. Again, you don't have to be afraid, you, have, you can't live your life in fear, saying, oh no, I eat too much, I'm this, I'm that, I'm overweight. Uh, the fear causes more problems than the overeating. But you should still know that the normal way in which a, a body is supposed to function is two meals a day. On Shabbat, we add a third meal. And the idea of this third meal, again, mincha time, afternoon time, towards the evening of Shabbat, is a special meal that's celebrating the Shabbat. Now, why a meal? Because usually when you eat, it gives you pleasure. For most people... It's the, most, it's, it's the most pleasurable thing that they do all day long. So, on Shabbat, you add another one. But says the Zohar, one of the sources for there being three meals on Shabbat is that the word day, hayom, is mentioned three times in the context of the manna when it was given in the wilderness. And when Moses started explaining to them what the manna was about, he also addressed that there would be no manna on Shabbat. The Sabbath, there would, no manna would fall down. So they had to eat what they had already prepared on Friday. And yet, he says the word hayom, today, three times. The third time, says Azor, the phrase is hayom lo, today not. So it says the Zohar, the first two times when he said Hayom, today the manna will fall and so on, that is the first two meals of the Sabbath. The third time when he says Hayom lo, today not, that's the third meal of the Sabbath. And what does it mean? That the third meal you don't eat. Because it says Hayom lo, today not, today you don't eat. It actually says, the full verse is Hayom lo timtseu basadeh. Today you will not find it in the field. But again, the Zohar understands that this means you're not supposed to eat during the third meal. So what are you supposed to do? Where does the pleasure come from? So this is a very important concept in all of Hasidic and Kabbalistic thought. That 
there are two forms of pleasure. There's what we call complex pleasure and simple pleasure. Complex pleasure, it's called in Hebrew, ta'anug murkav, means that the pleasure is being received indirectly from some other action. For instance, eating. So the food is the indirect action that's giving us the pleasure. Same thing could be said about um, drugs. Drugs also give pleasure. That's a complex pleasure you may not want most of the time, unless you have some real medical reason. But the whole premise is that complex pleasure is really, in the end, indirect pleasure, because you're not receiving the pleasure directly. You're getting it through some, it's called an enclothing of the pleasure in something else. The pleasure doesn't reach you directly. Simple or direct pleasure means that you receive the pleasure directly without anything that the pleasure is enclosed in or contained in. So it's called an, a simple pleasure. And that pleasure is infinitely stronger than pleasure that you receive through some intermediate medium. So... The pleasure that we receive during the time of the third meal when we don't eat can actually be greater than the pleasure that we receive during the first two meals of Sabbath, the evening meal and the day meal, where the pleasure is contained or, or, or transferred by, transmitted through the food. Now let's take this idea and apply it to Yom Kippur. It says that the reason we afflict the body is not in order to cause it pain. It's not in order to hurt it. It's not, as many people think, you could say this, but again, this is a lower way of thinking. This is a, an, a, a less mature way of looking at it than I'm afflicting the body because the body is to blame for many terrible things. So if I afflict it, ah, now, I've, now I have merited to have atonement for my body. That's a very low level of thought. The higher level of thought says that since atonement is the greatest pleasure, again, it's like being cleaned completely. And it doesn't, it, it's a wonderful experience. It's not a bad experience. But if I do it indirectly, then I would be receiving the atonement through other things. Here the idea is that I'm not even receiving it through any of the mediums of the body. That's what we call afflicting the body. So for instance, you normally when a person receives atonement in the time of the temple, how did they do it? They did it by bringing a sacrifice. The sacrifice, part of it was placed on the altar, and a large part of it was eaten by the priests, sometimes by the person himself, but here we're talking about most of the sacrifices which were eaten by the priests. The pre, the, the, and then the Talmud says, the priests eat, and the person is atoned for. Meaning through the eating, through the pleasure that the priests receive from the meat, I receive atonement. And yet... It's much, much higher when you don't even need to eat. If you don't need the pleasure to be given to you through some kind of intermediate, like the food, the pleasure is much greater. And so the verse in Isaiah says, uh, sorry, it's not a verse from Isaiah, it's a verse from Psalms, and I think we mentioned it last time, that... God gives us life in our fasting. The life force is actually increased because of the fasting. It's called lechayotam baraav, to give them life through their fasting. How can that be? Because you're actually tapping into the pleasure directly and not through some kind of medium. 
The same idea is that on Yom Kippur, we want to experience our connection to God without the burden of the body. Not that we want to afflict the body, but rather we want it not to be a burden on us. We don't want to have to eat and spend time on the food, and spend time on consuming it, spend time on digesting it, spend time on sleeping afterwards, because you're always tired after you eat. Instead, we want to use all the hours to cleave directly to God. So this is the end of what we discussed yesterday, that the five afflictions of the body are considered to be in the world of action. Um, The ceasing of work, meaning the afflictions of the body, we said, are in the vav, they're the world of formation. But it works the same way with the ceasing of work. By ceasing work, you receive pleasure directly from God without having to achieve anything in the world. And that we called that yesterday, if you recall, that the father founded the daughter, or God with, uh, sorry, God founded the earth with wisdom. So the wisdom here is the drawing backwards, it's a nullification. And actually, that nullification leads to a much more prominent, strong, and direct experience of the pleasure of life. So, we've been talking for, we're out of time. We didn't get to the higher two levels, let's just mention them again. The higher two levels are tshuva and confession, which is always associated with the first hay of God's um, four-letter name. The reason for that is uh, many verses that connect bina, understanding, the sphere of understanding, which is the world of, uh, of creation, the world of thought, uh, the world of order. This is all related to tshuva. It's all related to returning to God in many, many verses, and it's something, a motif that repeats again and again in the Zohar. And finally, we have the cleaving to God, which is obviously the highest letter of the Yud, where a person is to cleave to God, we reach a state of true nullification. And actually, everything leads up to this, meaning the first three levels of, we said, afflicting, uh, sorry, uh, ceasing from work, afflicting the body, the tshuva and confession, they all, in the end, support the highest level, which is the prayer, the cleaving to God. And the more a person appreciates that this is not about, again, afflicting in the sense of uh, hurting, it's rather denying the needs in order to focus on what's really important. So the more we realize this, the more the fast, first of all, is, as we said, who needs to eat? You don't need it. It's just superfluous. It's, 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 like, it's just unnecessary. And the more there's a feeling that this day is a special day on the calendar, it's once a year where we get to experience the soul in a much more direct way than we do the rest of the year. Thanks for joining. I wish everyone a gmar chatimah tova, which means to be sealed for a good and sweet year. And this year should be much better than last year. And we should also merit this year to not just have a good year ourselves, but to finally see the true and complete redemption with the building of the Beis HaMikdash, the building of the Temple in Jerusalem, the fraternity of mankind returning to the world in order to allow us to worship God together. All the best to everyone.